Hi YouTube. In this video we're going to prove that the cosine function is uniformly continuous on the set of real numbers. So before we do the proof, recall what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous. We say that f is uniformly continuous on the set of real numbers, so on r, if for every epsilon greater than zero, we can find a delta greater than zero, such that for all x, y in the set of real numbers, where the distance between x and y is less than delta, we have that the distance between f of x and f of y is less than epsilon. And the key difference between uh, continuity and uniform continuity is that in uniform continuity, delta is only allowed to depend on epsilon. It's not allowed to depend on anything else. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the proof. Uh, proof. Um, normally when I do a proof like this, I show you how to uh, figure it out. However, the proof uh, in this case is, is pretty simple as long as you have the right trig identity. So let's just do it. So we'll start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. And then we have to choose our delta. So you'd have to do some scratch work uh, to figure out the delta. I've already done this problem, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that delta is just going to be epsilon. And when you see the proof, you'll see why I didn't go through the scratch work. Then, for all x, y in the set of real numbers with the distance between x and y less than delta, we have to look at the distance between f of x and f of y. So we have... And so let's look at that distance, the distance between f of x and f of y. So the absolute value of f of x minus the absolute value of f of y. So that's equal to, well, f of x is simply cosine x. Okay, cosine x. And f of y is simply cosine y. Okay, cosine y. And so now uh, we're kind of stuck. So the trick is to use a trig identity. So this is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 sine, okay, sine of x plus y over 2 times sine of x minus y over 2. So this is the key in the proof, just knowing this trig identity or being able to reference it uh, in some way. Um, so when you see cosine x minus cosine y, always think, hey, wait a minute, isn't there a trig identity that relates these somehow? And so yeah, there is, and this is the identity. So now we need to uh, continue the proof. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use two things. So one, uh, recall that the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. At the same time, the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. So we're going to use these two facts to finish the proof. So the negative 2 here doesn't matter because we, when we take the absolute value of it, it's going to go away. In fact, let me just go ahead and show an extra step. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Then we have times the absolute value of the sine of x plus y over 2 times the absolute value of the sine, put a dot here for times, of x minus y over 2. Okay, good stuff. So now we get to use these little inequalities here that have been written. Let me change the color. So this is less than or equal to 2. So which one do we use for which piece? Well, we know that um, the absolute value of x minus y is less than delta. So we want to probably use this one for this piece here. Okay. 
That way we have an x minus y. So this one will be less than or equal to 1, so times 1. So we'll use the first one for the first piece here. And then this one will be less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y over 2. You can bring the 2 out of the absolute value and cancel it so it's no issue. So this is equal to the absolute value of x minus y. And we know that the absolute value of x minus y is less than delta. And we said that delta was equal to epsilon. And that completes the proof. And that's why in this problem I decided not to like show you how to find delta. I figured it, let me just show you the proof and you'll get it. A lot of times in these problems the delta is really obscure and it's like you really can't figure it out unless you know how to find delta. But now you kind of see how to prove it and, and how to figure it out, right? So whenever you encounter something like this, just always think, isn't there a trig identity that somehow relates cosine x and cosine y? So I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.